Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a very quick one. You can tell by my surroundings that I'm not in the usual spot. Shh. I'm Ashall St. Patrick Hewitt, one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, and welcome back to another edition of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, looking at the West Indies squad that has been selected to play the first test versus England at Lords, which starts, well, basically less than less than 24 hours, nearly coming up to less than 18 hours. As I look out the window to my right, physically look, <laughs> it is tipping it down. If the if the test match started today, no way we get played today. Absolutely no way. Luckily, it starts tomorrow. I haven't looked yet if the, if the forecast is going to clear up overnight, but it's not looking good. A mate of mine texts me, um earlier today and said day three, which would be Friday, looks like an absolute washout. I'm not 10, I'm not even, I'm not going to be there on Friday regardless. So Friday looks like a washout. Um, I may or may not be there for day one. Uh, It looks like, based on what's going on for me, it looks like I might not get to day one until the last hour and a half of play. But Santoki will be there for all of day one. I'll be there for all of day two. And then day four, I should be there for day four as well. But Without any further ado, let's 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 talk the cricket. Um, in the last thirty minutes or so, West Indies have released their names eleven for that first Test match, and it is as follows: Craig Brathwaite, Mikhail Louis, Kirk McKenzie, Alec Athanes, Kavem Hodge, Jason Holder, Josh De Silva, Gudakesh Multi, Jaden Seals, Alzari Joseph, Shamar Joseph, and I mean, first things first. I look at that squad and I don't see too many big, big talking points. I think anybody with sense expected the top five to be what the top five is. So Brathwaite, obviously, is captain, opening with Mikhail Louis. If anybody had gone to the Beckenham tour match like myself and Santoki did, it was obvious from the tour match that Mikhail Louis would be the first Saint Ketitian to uh, get his debut to play for the West Indies. So well done to Mikhail Louis. Super congratulations um, to him. He will debut at Lords. Craig will get another opening partner and we'll see how that goes. We hope Mikhail does well. He certainly is a a positive batter who looks to get on with it. So we we hope he does himself justice um, at Lords and throughout the rest of the Test Series. Kirk at three, that was expected. Um, Alec at four, that was expected. Kavem at five, that was expected. Now, those of you who watched the live show yesterday may remember that I said that in the press conference yesterday, I didn't get to ask the question that I wanted to ask. And if you, again, if you watched the live call-in show yesterday, and if you haven't, go back and watch it. It was a must-watch, particularly the first hour of the show. I said that I thought and expected that Jason Holder would bat six going into the test match. Those of you who are proper followers and listeners, supporters of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, you'll know I'm not making this up. Literally, I said it last night. I said, I think Holder will bat six. And I wanted to get Jason's reaction to me asking that question, not as a gotcha, but just to see where Jason's head is at in terms of finally being told and entrusted with the idea that you are a top six batter. You are the incumbent best Obviously, there's about to be some uncles now who jump into uh, the comments. You are the best all-rounder that we've got, so you should bat six. I just realized I need to put the overlay on. One second, people. Uh, There you go. You are the best all-rounder that we've got, so you should bat six. Um, And obviously, some people say, what about Mayers? What about Chase? What about this? But when we're talking about seeming all-rounders who are available and willing to play test cricket for the West Indies, it's Jason, right? So Jason will bat six. Some of you will say that's a big talking point. I don't see it as a big talking point. Um, Jason has three test match centuries. Um, He's just come off of a stint playing for Worcestershire, scored a century for Worcestershire. I think you have to tell Jason and then trust Jason and say, yep, that's your role. Now, 
Also, you have to understand that within the bowling attack, Jason is no longer, and I say this with respect, he's no longer a frontline seamer for us. I think by being told to bat six, it's also an acknowledgement that his role in test cricket for the West Indies has changed. So I expect him to be second change. Give or take different stages of the match, but I see Jason's role now as second change bowler um, and probably to bring control and hold an end. I don't. I think gone are the days where we throw Jason hold of the ball and say, you are the premier wicket taker. You will get us back into this match. I think now the context is, Jason, here's the ball. Kimar's not here. Control things. Bring an element of control to proceedings. And if you can prize out a wicket or two, bonus. But first things first, bring some control to proceedings. I think Jason's role will subtly change in, in test match cricket going forward. I don't even know how many more years we've got of Jason playing test match cricket, but I suspect that moving him up to six is also a recognition of his role now changing in the West Indies team. Josh at seven, no brainer. And here's the only real big talking point. Goodakesh Multi, not Kevin Sinclair. And I'm not mad at it. In the Discord right now, as I record, right now in the Discord, there's a back and forth going between different people saying Sinclair should have played on our on our Twitter X page. There's people atting us going Sinclair should have played. I think Santoki put in his team prior to the um, team being picked, his predicted side was Sinclair is going to play. I'm not mad at this decision. Let me explain why. If the reason to pick Kevin Sinclair was because you wanted to shore up the batting lineup, that means we're picking a team not designed. Hear me out. Hear me out. That would mean we're picking a team not designed to win the test match, per se. We would be picking a team first and foremost with the idea of how do we stay in the test match? How do we ensure that we don't collapse in the test match. And I want everyone to be honest with themselves. I need everybody to be honest when they hear me saying this. If Sinclair was in your side, was he in the side because you see him as a um, front? Well, do, you, do you see him? Sorry, sorry. If Sinclair is in your side, was in your side, was he in your side primarily because of what he can do with the bat or what he can do with the ball? Or were you genuinely saying 50-50? Now, I think the large majority of people had Sinclair in their side because they wanted the assurance of him as a buttress almost in case the top order collapsed and then Jason at six, Josh at seven, Kevin at eight to basically either do a reconstruction job or do a um, save the test match job or rebuild or, or add some bonus runs, whatever it might be. But I just think that that might be the wrong way and mentality to look at the construction of a side for Lords. Hear me out again. England picked Shoaib Bashir. So England's attack is Atkinson, um, Atkinson, Wokes, Anderson. That's the three frontline seamers. Ben Stokes, obviously, is the bowling, uh, the, the all-rounder at six. So this is similar to our side. So England have got Atkinson, Anderson, Wokes. We have Seals, Alzari, Shamar. England's all-rounder is Ben Stokes. Ours is Jason Holder. So it says like for like at this point in time. Obviously, we've got the quicker bowlers. England have the bowl on a length, seam it about bowlers in, in, in Jimmy and Wilkes, who probably will cause damage, I'd imagine. Um, and then England pick Bashir. Now, for England to pick Bashir, I have to assume, I don't know, but for England to pick Bashir, to, for England to pick Bashir, I have to assume that that means that England think Lords is going to offer something to a spinner. Otherwise, they possibly would have gone with a seam attack and asked Joe Root to bowl a bit of his dibbly dobbly off spin, right? The fact they've picked Bashir tells me they think there might be something out there. And I just think West Indies have gone like for like. I think West Indies have looked at the pitch as well and said, hold on a minute, there might be something in it for a spinner. And from the minute you make a decision that there might be something in it for the spinner, you have to pick the best spinner. You can't look at Kevin Sinclair and Goodakesh Moti and go, I'm going to pick the defensive spinner because we need some protection at number eight with the bat over I'm going to pick the attacking spinner. And let's be honest, the, the better spinner, Goodakesh Moti is a better spinner 
than Kevin Sinclair. That shouldn't even be open for debate. It's not about what Malty's done in white ball cricket. Any any proper observer of, of West Indies cricket will say that Gudakesh Malti is a better spinner than than um Al, than uh, than Kevin Sinclair. That's not that's not a criticism of Kevin Sinclair. To me, that's just basic facts, right? So if you've looked at the pitch and you've made an assessment that there's something in it, there's something in it for the spinners. Well, in that case, you 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 have to pick Gudakesh Malti. It's, it's, it's just a no-brainer. So um in that regard, the team makes sense. Now, obviously, some people say, but Mash, but Mash, what happens if Josh gets out? Our 8, 9, 10, 11 looks slim. And yeah, the 8, 9, 10, 11 would then be what? Alzari at 8, Moti at 9, Shamar at 10, Jaden at 11. And some will say, boy, that's a long tail. But look at England's tail. Oh, no, Wokes is actually, Wokes come back. Wokes at 8. Atkinson, do you know? Oh, sugar, I forgot about that. See, you lot might have worked out where I am now. Um, so <laughs> I might have to mute this. Um, Wokes at eight, so they'll have Wokes at eight, Atkinson at nine. Atkinson can hit a long ball, you know. Wokes at eight, Atkinson at nine. I don't know who's worse or better out of Bashir and Anderson, so we'll wait and see. So to me, really and truly, the West Indies selection is a like for like selection in, in, in relation to the. Um, the England selection. Yes, I'm, I'm willing to hear that people might have an issue with Jason batting six. They might have an issue with Gudakesh getting in over Kevin Sinclair. But really and truly, is it that deep? Is it really that deep? I think this more than likely is the best side that West Indies could pick. And finally, I guess the final point I'd make is that your number eight, the person you pick at number eight should primarily be picked because they're in the team to bowl. You shouldn't be picking your number eight with the idea in mind of, please save us if our batting collapses. People who are picked numbers one to five, certainly, you're in the team to make runs. That is their primary role. People who are picked eight to 11, you're in the team to bowl us to victory. That is your primary role. I think West Indies, even ir irrespective of our relative strengths, weaknesses, whatever, have to start picking our teams in relation to that argument rather than trying to take somewhat of a bits and pieces approach where it's like, you can do a bit of this, which might help us here, rather than picking strength for strength, whether batting, bowling, etc. Listen, I don't expect everybody to agree with me. It's a little quick one. This is a legitimate quick one. A little quick one, people. Let me know. Get at, get, get at me in the comments below. A little quick one for your morning and afternoon or evening to watch ahead of the test match starting tomorrow. Is this the 11 that you would have picked? You happy with it? You sad with it? You vex about something? You want to cuss? Get in the comments below. Let me know. And on the way out, like the video, share the video, subscribe. Follow us at Carib Cricket, Twitter, Instagram, X, TikTok, Facebook. Um, what else am I missing? Patreon, um, in the, everything, find us everywhere and on everything. And also, if you'd like to support us, head to www.patreon.com forward slash carib cricket. If you'd like to make a contribution to keep us on the airways, help us buy some equipment. We want to start doing some proper videos, people. Help us buy some equipment. Look at my nice shirt. Mm -mm. Look at my nice buttoned up shirt. Looking. Slightly looking a bit Chris out here, you know, slightly, slightly. I'm trying a little piece, piece. Um, so um, help us, people. Help us uh, become a patron and look out for some content, obviously, tomorrow. Uh, uh, we'll be at the test match. And Tokyo will be there all day. I'll be there much later in the day. Hold on a minute. Let me mute. Muting. I'm back. So, yeah, uh, if, you want, if you'd like support, do your thing. Get us in the comments below. I've been Mashal St. Patrick Hewitt, one half the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Test match starts tomorrow. Let's rally around the West Indies. Let's go, people. Excitement time. Let's move. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. 